Hello everyone, I'm BadnobiX and welcome to another tutorial. Go ahead and drop a camera in. And then the first way we're going to do this is a camera rail rig. So what we're going to do is slide this forward. Is You're going to want to take the camera and connect it under the rail. And then you're going to right click at the bottom, go to animation and create a level sequencer. Inside, then you can name it whatever you want. Inside the level sequencer, you're going to want to drag your camera and your ra rail rig. So how you do this now is you take you track current position on rail and it'll create another tab. You'll click this little button, it'll create a keyframe, go all the way to the end of your video, and then you'll want to set this and then you'll want to edit this and change it to where you want it to be on the rail. So as you can see, it's moving along the rail system and the camera's moving with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at the end and create another keyframe. So now there's a keyframe over here, and once we render out the video, which is this little button right here. Uh, I'd like to render in 30 frames per second because that's how they do it for cinematic movies. As you can see, the camera is moving along the sequence rail. So that's one way to do it. That's kind of the basic way to do it. It's not my preferred favorite way to do it. And then it'll put it inside of a uh, open capture folder and it'll put it inside of a little uh, video capture folder inside of your project. So if you go to your project, go to saved and then video captures, it'll be located right in here. All right, so for the next option, we're going to go back in. We're gonna, I want to create another level sequence. Go ahead and create a new camera, because why not? So this is actually pretty simple. We just drop it in there, and then if it doesn't have this transform, don't fret. Just click track, and then go down to transform, and it'll open this up. So you're gonna need this. And what this does is allows you to keyframe the location, rotation, and scale. So we're gonna keyframe where it's at. Boom. Then we're gonna, it, now there are a few problems. If you slide it forward and then you move it, it forces it back into its original location. So you have to move the time beforehand. And if you keyframe on top of it, you'll have to make sure to delete the new keyframe. Uh, then you can start adding your new, next keyframes. Add a new keyframe over here. So if you notice, I can just move the camera. You can move it however you want, wherever you want, and then keyframe it. And now it's got a location. And you notice it's spinning along it because it's new lo rotation is facing that way. So from there, we can go ahead and I'm just going to go spin it around so that way it's just dynamic. And you could use this to be extremely creative and do many different things. So we're going to do that and then we're going to slide this over a little bit more. And we're going to just have it return to its original location. It's close enough. So we're going to go ahead and render this out and you'll see like that's another way to do it. And in my opinion, if you look, it's a lot less uniform of a movement. So as you can see, it goes over and then it suddenly rips around. So I like using this system more because as I said, it gives a more organic feel to the uh, camera's move. So that's the other way. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot and uh, good luck game developing.